Yo, 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 what's up? It's your boy Chi Chapman with the Chi Chapman Show. Medium Mill. I got a very special guest in the motherfucking building today. Uh, an artist, a videographer, <laughs> Mr. Kodak Black going viral. We got Elsie Hunch on the motherfucking building today, man. What's good? What's the word, man? How you doing, man? Man, you know, we vibing, living. You feel me? For a lot of people that don't know, this is my little bro. <laughs> Same pops, different moms, uh, oh, came gosh. up together type shit. But we gonna definitely talk a lot of shit today. I'm gonna let LC El Hancho get in his bag. You feel me? So for the people that don't know LC Hancho, and I know everybody know you, man. Uh, let people know about your come up, um, how you grew up, what part of town you grew up on, and so on and so forth. Oh shit, man. Like I said, LC Hancho, aka Mr. State to Stay. If you don't know your bitch, know for sure. But uh, like my upbringing, a nigga really from the west side, but I spent all my time on the south side. <laughs> like, south side really what made me for real. Like 19th Avenue and Southern, to be exact, that shit really made me. But man, just growing up, seeing the shit that we going through day to day, shit, goddamn trying to find a way out and shit i damn near found my way out moved to texas after i graduated graduated eighth grade and then shit it just been on the road ever since moving to texas changed my life for real that's what's up man elementary school man let's talk about it what elementary school you oh, went to wow it varma past door okay yeah. okay how was that experience man Man, wow, man, fucking with the Mexican hoes. Back then, I ain't gonna lie. Y'all may try to kiss me out this shit, but back then, I did not fuck with black girls. It was only Mexicans. But like I said, I moved to Texas, changed my life, and I've been fucking with the sisters ever since. So <laughs> talk your shit, man. Talk your shit. Yeah, man. Shit. You said you 19th, 19th Avenue of Southern, man. That is kind of that's a, a very dangerous part of South Phoenix. Yeah. One of the most dangerous one, one, parts yeah, of South one. Phoenix. I'm going to say one of them. Talk about just kind of growing up over there, though. Shit, man. You know, young, dumb, you know, breaking into houses and shit back then. Yeah. Shit, my friends, they all stayed in Lindo Park. So I used to just walk across the street, go to Lindo, go to the um hoop and shit like that. But other than that, it was just really like, skateboarding jerking jerking played a big part 2000 what 10 11 Facts. yeah that yeah. should be played a big part that's when it was no like the kill it was killers but it ain't how it is now where everybody want to ride around with switches back then these niggas was dancing for real niggas was crumping niggas was in sports now everybody want to be a shooter and i ain't gonna lie i like it back then like i miss this shit bro like every time i come to the city i just reminisce yeah, you got like, to. All the times, like, this shit really made me, like. Stumping grounds, for sure. Yeah, stumping grounds for real. Like, this shit really made me for real. So, I'm just always thankful where I come from. I'm going to never switch up where I come from. I may change my environment, but this shit, this shit in me, man. This shit in me. Hey, talk Phoenix, your shit. This shit in me, man. AZ up, man. <laughs> hey, talk about your siblings, man. My siblings? Shit. I got what? I got two brothers, three sisters. Um shit i mean i don't know what to really say when it comes to siblings i mean shit i'm an uncle <laughs> uh let's see siblings 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 we all crazy i ain't gonna lie we all got different paths in life some working some want to do this social media some going for sports um and shit like that um but everybody in my family, like my close siblings, we all just trying to find a way out and really just cherish the people that we have at the time and create more memories and live life for real. Yeah, man. Tell me about that Chapman name, man. That last <laughs> name, man. That famous Chapman name, man. Let's talk about it, man. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. The Chapman boys right now. I feel like we we ten and zero right now. We we yeah. doing our shit right now. Going as, crazy as far as that, but shit with the Chapman. Mm, I mean, ain't really nothing to say. <laughs> it you know, you Uncle Elvis son for it's real. But Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Elvis. Damn. You feel me, man? Leaving AZ, man. Leaving AZ, going to Texas. You said it changed your life, man. How? I mean. Shit, like I said before, like when I was staying here, 
if I would have stayed out here, I would probably had a a, um, a kid by now. Shit, I would have probably been running the streets because I was definitely uh, heading down the wrong direction. Uh, when I moved to Texas, it made my mind clear. I started thinking about going to college. Um, I was doing like black um, college programs, going to Texas State, um, doing um, uh, what's that internships at Texas State. Yeah. And shit, I went I went to community college for like a year, but I just knew it wasn't for me. I just picked up the camera like how I always like doing and I'm just focusing on my camera path right now. YouTube okay. path all that. So so the passion for filmmaking though, like what 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 started that? What sparked that? I ain't gonna lie, I always liked recording, like people just off the phone. And I just remember what it like twenty seventeen. Man, I had about seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars, and I was like, man, I gotta get this camera. My dad wasn't trying to take me to go get the camera, man. So I was about to steal. I was about to steal his whip to go get the camera, but he took yeah. me. And after since then, I just started making like I just had a passion for it. I was shit doing reaction videos, and then shit it started like doing pranks, YouTube pranks on my mom and shit. And then got down. It started like me like messing with the rappers, going to California, going like different stages tapping in with the hood that's why it's like right now it's crazy because i'm seeing all these youtubers like doing all these hood vlogs pulling up on rappers in their hood i've been doing this Man, a long time ago yeah, so yeah. it's just it's 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 not a game though this shit gets serious it get treacherous like they don't know they really putting their life in danger when they doing that stuff they doing it for the views but deep down like you could you got to know who you really with for real like yeah, yeah. the nigga you may be with like this nigga may be like one of the biggest ops niggas ready to take him down anytime yeah, yeah, broad yeah. daylight he don't care they don't care who in the car with him they all getting hit so you just got to know like the people you with man when you doing these videos and stuff in the hood that's what's up, man. The content world, man. Tell people about how how this content world is, man. As far as the the highs, the lows, people stealing your sauce, <laughs> stealing your videos. Like, let's talk about that. Well, the highs and the lows with this social media stuff. Um, I say like being shadow banned. Like that's like the worst feeling because you could put out so much content and all your followers won't see it like they won't see it so it'll make like look like it may look like you're following fake it may look like you pay for followers but you shadow ban like I, i'm i've been shadow banned for damn near three years like and i ain't never paid for no likes i ain't never paid for no views no followers none of that i got it all out the mud so just to see like me being shadow banned and all my content don't like i put out dope videos shit the quality a1 mm -hmm. um like i feel like that's like one of the the downs about it but the good thing about like doing social media you could touch the people like just yeah. off your phone you could touch the people you could you could find like i have fans in africa like watching my stuff before so it's like with social media it gives you the platform to expand to all these people that you never met or you never knew of that existed yeah so LC Hancho visuals, man. Yeah, LC Hancho visuals. Let's talk about it. what made you start going going on the streets and interviewing people on the streets after people, you know, just having a club night out. Like, what made you want to start taking your mic out there and your camera and start interviewing people? Uh, what made me start doing that? Uh, one thing. Well, I'm gonna say this. One thing why I like doing it because it helped me with my social skills. Yeah. I'm really an introvert. I really don't like people for real, and I just stay to myself. But going out, talking to the people, shit, it's helping my brand out. And then shit, you just get to know where somebody from. Like I mean, like you get to pick somebody's brain and stuff like that. But what made me get into it, just really trying to find other ways to make content, more content, and. Yeah. That's what people like right now on YouTube. Them, them public interviews, them questions, spicy questions, and stuff like that. So that's what's up, man. I seen the uh, AZ to Detroit takeover, man. <laughs> uh, a lot of crazy shit, man. <laughs> Fights, drama. Y'all kicking people out the crib, man. man. Kicking bitches out like Pam. Man, what? <laughs> so fuck, man. Let's talk about that, man. Let's. I, I need the the exclusive shit, man. Cause some of y'all videos be cutting off where you can't really see what you know what I mean. Like you know I, what I'm saying. 
I ain't gonna lie, we be having the wildest parties. Like, my, my, shout out to the Stat Boys, man. We be having the wildest parties, like, everywhere we go. Miami, Detroit, New York. Like, we go anywhere we get this shit rocking because, like I said, I'm Mr. State to State for real. So, I know people in different states. I know the right people. So, man, we be having the wildest parties. I mean, it be a lot of shit going on that I can't really put on camera. Yeah, cause yeah, yeah. It just be too much, yeah. but I be want to put it on camera. But it's just too confidential. Yeah, yeah. And you feel me? I'm I'm never a person that's thirsty for views and yeah, shit like yeah. that. But I'm gonna put some good shit in there what they want to see. But yeah, man, it would be wild. Tell me about lie. one of the crazy experience. You ain't gotta share too much. Tell, tell me about one crazy incident, man. I mean, everybody know about it though. So I'm gonna just say it. So man, it was like the first party we had, right? Yeah. We came down here, my nigga shot, me and my nigga shot, cancer boys, man. We we put this party together. I brought my niggas from Detroit down here. I'm like, man, we finna do this party and shit like that. Cause they rap and yeah, shit like yeah. that. So I'm like, we finna do this party. So we did the party. We, we 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 brought we found all the girls to come to the party. It was this one girl in particular, man. She feel it, she fucking with my nigga Nate, man. She feeling on his chains. Rubbing on his neck, all that stuff like that. Her homegirl, she had a homegirl that was cop blocking. So, like, you know, they upstairs doing what they do. Y'all can see it on the vlog. She go upstairs having a commotion, talk about, woo, woo, woo. Like, she wasn't going. So, the friend was just, the friend was going, and her homegirl was trying to stop it. Because I, I didn't know the friend had a nigga at the time. Oh, so, okay. we recording all that. So after everything happened, she talk about she got raped. So everybody thinking we having Diddy parties. Oh, <laughs> shit. Everybody talk about we having Diddy parties, but really the girl was going and she got caught in 4K. Yeah. And she had a nigga. So like, if that was the case, if if motherfuckers was getting raped, like they said, motherfucker would have had a rape kit going on. Cops yeah. would have been at the B&B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you, you on Instagram, Facebook, shaking ass half naked the next day. God damn, that's, so, that's some serious shit right there. Hell yeah. <laughs> God damn. You should give me something a little bit more light. <laughs> shit, man. Mr. State to State, man. Yeah, man. Man, we'll talk, let's talk about it, man. Where, where that? Where did that name come from? Shit, really just being on the road for real, man. I've been on the road, shit. Really at the high school, just taking that risk, taking that chance, just going to new places, just networking, meeting people, like... Really, state to state name came from really with me, like fucking with like the rappers and shit. Yeah. Going, cause what I'll do, I'm gonna tell y'all some sauce right now. What I'll do, I'll like, so since I do vlogs with rappers, I'll just listen to music for like four hours, try to find new artists. And if I feel like an artist got buzz, I'll DM him, like, let's work. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna come to your city, let's work. So wherever he at, let's say he in Milwaukee. I pull up to Milwaukee. I'm like, man, we gonna lock this shit in. We gonna get this vlog out. Be with the rapper for about a day and a half or just a day and just capture everything. And uh, I just do it for certain artists that I like. So I'll reach out to artists that shit I either feel like that finna blow or just somebody I fuck with, like with the music shit. And that's how I really go state to state, man. And plus, shit, I love traveling, like, that shit expand your mindset so much and i just wish everybody would do that shit like fuck i mean i know a job gonna pay the bills but just really take your pto whatever you got going on and really travel and explore because this shit beautiful like it's 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 a beautiful feeling man that's what's up man you said being in texas i know you you've been around the yellow bc's the mo threes the chat boy freddy's have you been around charleston white have you seen him before no i never ran into charleston white yet Cause I know you fuck with the South by Southwest when it was popping. Yeah. How, how was that experience like? You know, just meeting some of them, the, those artists, uh, Maxo Creams and the Sauce Walkers and shit like that. I feel like if you're an artist, you need to be at South by Southwest. Like yeah. that's like a gate to bring in new artists and just a networking, uh, a networking pile. Like you don't know who you could run into. You don't know who you could meet. Um, and shit, you may meet your favorite rapper and shit you gonna have to pay a fee but it's all networking experiences and i just feel like a lot of people do sleep on south by southwest after I, i'm not gonna lie though after covid it did die down because before that they had lucci they had uh 
Lil Uzi, they had um, just a lot of rappers and shit. The baby before he was known, he was wearing a diaper. Yeah, yeah, that was and, stupid as hell. But and yeah, shit like good, that. Good marketing now. Yeah, good marketing, yeah, good sure. marketing. Yeah. Cause that's how I did my Kodak shit during yeah, South yeah, by yeah, South. Yeah, we gonna get so. into that. We gonna get into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like I said, I feel like any upcoming rapper and even known rapper shit, it's nothing. It's nothing to meet new people and get a new fan base, but. I just feel like every rapper coming up or people that say they really want to do this, they need to be at South by Southwest. Sure. Sure. Um, you dropped a song, man. Have you ever? <laughs> <laughs> On all platforms right now, man. Yeah, go what stream made you, that right now. What made you get into your 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 rapping bag? Man, I ain't gonna lie, man, I've been rapping like 2017, but that's when I was like, 2017 was the year I was really trying to figure myself out for real. Yeah. So, shit, I was rapping, shit, I was shit, selling weed, selling drugs, I was just doing everything, picking up the camera just to see what I really wanted to do. And shit, I found my passion, but what made me create Have You Ever, shit, it was my birthday. I just woke up on my birthday like, nigga, I'm about to go to the studio. I wrote the song down and shit, went to the studio and recorded shit. I'm still going to do a visual for it. I just ain't thought about, I, I want to shoot the visual in Miami. Like yeah, yeah. the whole, the whole setup idea that I got the concept is Miami based. And then shit, what I'm talking about in the song. Yeah. Niggas really living that for real. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, you said, uh, with you traveling state to state, you said it can get real dangerous out there. Yeah. Can you tell us about a time where some shit was shit was about to go down when you was filming or just, just being around? <laughs> yeah, I can tell that. I mean, shit, you know, Get Back never got a date. You feel me? But shit, back in like 2017, I went to Oakland for the first time. I was supposed to go shoot um, a commercial for somebody here. And like I said, back then I was doing a reaction. So I met some dudes um that was from the area off of reactions and shit and they was like oh come out here shoot a video i was already going down there so when i got down there i had met up with them so you know they were playing their role playing the cool and shit like that not knowing they had another agenda on the other side you yeah. feel me and shit I ain't gonna lie, that situation made me. That's another situation that made me, but shit, I got down there, shit, they showing the nigga the hood and shit, acting like shit, cool. Next day, they like, uh, we about to shoot a video. Shit, I pulled up. No, I had them pull up on me, cause I ain't had no, I ain't had no whip out there and shit. So they pulled up on me and shit. I had a gut feeling. I did not go with my gut feeling, my intuition. I did not go, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm letting that shit go off. Yeah. So shit, we pull up to a store, they like, hey, we finna bounce out, man. Nigga done, nigga done uh, left some equipment in the car, and then I had my backpack. So we in the store. They act like they finna go to the restroom. Ooh, I'm trying to get some shit. They, like, start running out of the stove. So I'm running right after them. Like, I'm like, what the fuck y'all niggas on? So them niggas put the guns out on me. So I'm like, man, we need all this shit. Like, Are you serious? Hell yeah, bro. They like, and nigga, I'm like, what the fuck? Like in my head, I'm like, nigga, what the fuck going on? Because this is my first experience. Like that shit ever happening. So like, I'm glad that shit happened, how it happened. Because shit, like the next, the week after that, I moved to LA. I started doing interviews for um. This is 50, 50 cent platform. Yeah, yeah. I got a new camera the same week. So it was a blessing. But yeah, like that shit really made me. And then after that, that's how I know how to move in certain cities. I'm not, I'm not going to be in a place for too long. If shit feeling shaky, if that shit come to that point, then nigga, I'm going to blow this bitch on yeah. God. Like, you feel Damn. me? But yeah, that's like one of, yeah, yeah that's one of the worst uh, yeah, situations yeah. that happened to me going out of town that's what's up man we're gonna get into this kodak man you went crazy viral for the kodak <laughs> impersonations and shit yeah you went crazy with the kevin gates the nba young boy rest in peace rest the in DJ peace Khaled. um let's talk about the first time you went viral bro and how did you feel okay so i gotta backtrack so like i said when i was doing south by southwest you know, shit, I went out there. First of all, I had my sister make the wig. So I'm like, I told her, I'm like, man, make this wig for me. This shit gonna go viral. I already had the feeling it's gonna go viral. 
Um, so I went out there. At first, I wasn't going to do it because one of my homies that I had at the time, he wasn't there. So I'm like, man, I was just feeling like, man, I may not do this shit. He not here. I want this nigga to like, like be here like for the support. He ain't show up, but I still did it. So I'm thankful for myself that I, I don't depend on nobody. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we did that shit. Um, I got a buzz, and then I started seeing the um, NBA young boy, fake Kevin Gates, and I seen it on Twitter. It was like after I was in New Orleans and Halloween, because I did Kodak in New Orleans too for uh, Halloween. I seen the picture of them. I said, they finna have a fake Kodak. And then some told me to check my DM like a couple of days later. It was a fake Kevin Gates in my DM. He was like, he was like, what up, whoa, where, where you stay at? Um, I said, I'm in Texas. He said, I'm, I'm in Louisiana. And then he told me what part. I'm like, damn, that shit an hour away from my dad crib. I need to go out there anyway. So we just locked in and we did that first skit when uh like they met Kodak for the first the time. And shit. Uh that was in a crib. Uh, that crib. was in okay. a crib. Okay. He uh they had they had brought Kodak out and I popped out glee. And shit like that. That shit. That shit went viral. We like we fucked up the internet. Like shade room posted us. Um, uh, college kid posted us. Like that shit went super viral. Like and I ain't gonna lie. Back then, <laughs> what I know now. Back then, I probably was caring more about the like the views and shit. Yeah. But I should have been more in my bag at that situation. But. You know, it's a living, you learn situation. Yeah, okay. Cause I seen you over there in Kodak Hood with some of his, yeah, yeah the sniper game. How, how, how did that take place? Shit, my nigga West, my nigga West from Miami. So um, Kodak and his brother uh, got an artist named uh, Big Fredo, Big Fredo Hard and shit like that. So West and Big Fredo, they from the same hood, North Miami and shit. So they locked it in because they already, they already knew who I was. Like I said, like, uh, during the pandemic, the whole everybody's watching me. The whole everybody thought I was from Florida. They was watching me, so um, we locked it in because me and Fredo did a vlog. So John Wicks, Kodak brother, had came, and uh, he 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 was just looking at me and shit like that. He was like, uh, I forgot what he said. He had said it in the video, but we had locked in. We had knocked out a skit in the hood and shit where I walked up, and then John Wicks was like. That Kodak, hell no. Like, like you not my brother type shit. And that shit did a million views on shit. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and shit like that. But I wish it would have been Kodak. Like, yeah. that that's all I've been waiting on for me and Kodak to lock in the skit because I know what it's going to do. Have y'all have y'all been in, like, communication contact? Yeah, yeah. Me and Kodak have been in communication. Um, I was in a section for uh Martin Luther King Day in Houston. Um and shit, his artist was like, "That's Kodak 2.0." Like they know about me. After I did the skit with um Kodak brother, he had called Fredo. Kodak had called Fredo. And was like, "I see y'all had uh yak yak in the hood with y'all and shit like that." So, like he he know who I am. Shit, I DM he'll he'll respond hard what I'm saying and shit like that. We just ain't really like met on a one on one. Like you yeah. feel me? Like yeah. I see you had locked in with my dog, Funny Marco, man. Oh, yeah. That's my dog, man. <laughs> shit, what, how did that come about? Really doing the Kodak. Like, the Kodak yeah. shit opened up a lot of doors, and he had DM me. It was like, uh, you want to go live and shit? I'm like, hell yeah, I'll go live. Cause shit, I'll be watching his shit. And shit, my, uh, one of my homies, he from the same, they from the same city, Kansas City and shit. And he would always tell me like his upbringing, like funny Marco story. Wow. Like, like with his dad passing away, like his upbringing and shit. And I just feel like me and him could like relate. Cause we all trying to get this shit, like change our yeah, life with sure. this content shit. But yeah, that's how that shit really came about. He hit me in my DM. Cause, uh, Clutch, he seen me on Clutch Live, um, and he had DM me. It was like, let's go on live, and that's how that shit happened. That's what's up, man. Uh, with this filming shit you're doing, has there been any big opportunities that, that took place for you that was like, this is life-changing? Uh, I ain't going to say life-changing, because uh, I'm still making my own ways. Like, 
I'm really putting in my own lay work for real. Yeah, for sure. Um, and just networking with the people. I feel like that's was that's the life changing part. Just networking with the people, working with a few artists, um, especially with my nigga uh, SME Tax Free. Like he one of the big artists in Milwaukee, and I know he gonna blow. He up there with Chicken Pete. They like this yeah. and shit. He fuck with my vlogs. He fuck with the shit I got going on and shit and we just making this shit work like just building and I feel like one of my goals is going on tour with a rapper and just vlogging straight vlogging, straight vlogging yeah. and just so people can see my creativity and man the show niggas I'm gifted with this shit talented for real sure man you did a pop the balloon in Arizona man it wasn't a pop the balloon. I did a oh, uh, like spin a wheel. Oh, spin a wheel. wheel. How, yeah. how was how was that? I, I seen that some shit broke inside that motherfucker. Man, something. motherfuckers broke shit. You can't have shit with black people. No, I'm just like now, uh, that shit. I'm not gonna lie. It's weak. It was weak. I'm not gonna lie. It was weak. Just for the simple fact, like they don't really, they don't really um fuck with YouTube out here like that. Like how Houston or Atlanta, like they do that shit out there for real. Like they could get 20 people easy, 30 people well, easy. It's hard as fuck trying to get somebody out here, to do anything out here. Everybody fucking on everybody. So they scared to be on camera. <laughs> man, bro, I ain't gonna lie, man. It's just, it's gotten bad out here, bro. I've been reaching out to everybody. Nobody yeah, it's a drought. either responding or- It's a drought, for sure. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta pick who, who you gotta pick, man. Hell yeah. Man, what you got any up and coming events? Shit, uh, I'm going to New York with my nigga Tax Free. Um, okay, I'm gonna lock him in with some people. Uh, I know A and R from Sony Music. Yeah. Gonna lock him in with some people. Um, other than that, um, I ain't really got nothing going on. You know, this shit just be happening for real. Like, yeah, yeah. Shit, you may see me one day and and out here. The next day, I'm somewhere in. Miami or some shit like yeah. shit just be happening for real but other than that on the top of my head nothing really like throw this party out here we doing a a part four out here it's okay. probably gonna be my last party in January yeah. and start like doing bigger things I'm done with the scene for real yeah, yeah. <laughs> outside of the 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 skits and um the music man What's your day to day outside of all, all of this type of shit? Shit, they can be working. I ain't gonna lie. Shit, they can be working. Um, just trying to figure out new shit to do for real. like more, uh, more create. Uh, figure out ideas just to go viral again as me, not as somebody else yeah, or yeah, like yeah. Kodak. Just trying to find ways and. Shit, I feel like I got the touch. I got the look. I got the quality. My my content be fire. I just need the more exposure at me, and that's what I'm working on right now. That's what's up, man. Um, I'm going to say something else. How is your mental health, man? Because a lot of people, we get on these podcasts, and we talk about all the shit we're doing, <laughs> but you got to be checking on your people about mental health and, and just happiness. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't be happy, or let's, let's talk about your mental health. How is your mental health? I said it's all right. I mean... The most time I'm feeling the most happy is when I'm traveling. I ain't gonna lie, like it's just like a getaway in life. Like just traveling, shit going out the country and shit, just that's what I love to do, just travel. And I feel like that's my happiness is just traveling. Like I can't sit in a spot for too long because I'm a damn near tweet for real. I gotta be on the go, I gotta be on the move and just shit. Really shit. I just, I'm trying to get better. I ain't gonna lie. Like, besides traveling, I need to find something else that made me, well, I like shooting the videos and shit. That made me happy too. But I say it's all right. My mental health, all right. That's what's up, man. A young minority coming up from the ghetto, from the hood, from South Phoenix, or just any ghetto around the world, man. What advice would you give somebody that's trying to pick up a camera and do the same shit you do? Shit, stay consistent, man. You gotta keep going. Like, don't care what nobody say. Like, you just gotta be yourself, be you, stay true to yourself, and pop your shit everywhere you go. Like, like I said, if you wanna do the YouTube shit, you wanna tap in with people, just be yourself at all times. Never try to fit in. Never like not try to be somebody that you're not, cause they will they will see it off you for sure. They will see it. But I just say stay consistent and 
shit, stay down till till it's your time for real. And you and you don't got a team. You do solo, solo, dolo. Yeah, I really do a solo shit. I mean, I got a homie, uh, DJ. He be filming me like when I'm in the city and shit. But out of town, I just be filming myself. I want a team. I need a team. Like, I like third person vlog. Like, if somebody record me, like, I feel it feel way easier instead of holding the camera up like this. So, yeah, I want a team. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I could get more shit going on. Um, and just like having those people. Having those people with you, y'all could bounce off each other, create ideas like how DDG and his crew doing, like Deshae and them boys, like them boys really, they could use each other to make content. Like it ain't hard, but when it's just you by yourself, that shit do get hard and yeah, shit like that's, that. That's facts. That's facts. Oh. You did say something. What I got coming up. I do got something coming up. I forgot about this. So one of uh, me and my dudes from Detroit, uh, Band Gang Javar, he like one of the he one of the dudes from uh a big group out of Detroit rap scene. Me and him doing a reality TV show. Um, we we gonna kick it off next year. We gonna have like ten females. We gonna fly them out to like a, a island. We don't know what island yet, but we may we may do also like on some Ray J shit, like real chance of love type yeah, shit yeah, for yeah. him. Or we just may just do like I ain't gonna say like baddies, but we gonna have like our own twist like. Motherfuckers gonna be it's gonna be conflict where well, people want to see conflict, and then also it's gonna be like motherfuckers gonna be getting sent home, shit like, oh, like that, a, like a, like a blue face, yeah, 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 like shit, shit like, like that. that. So yeah. yeah, that's what I got going on. I forgot all about that shit. Have you thought about doing more like more skits, and have you thought about doing like a movie or a documentary or something like that? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, skits. I've been doing like little Instagram skits from like yeah. just. Whenever I got a chance and shit, like me, me and my girl, we be doing like skits and shit. I be trying to get her onto the way with this YouTube shit. But um, as far as a documentary, yeah, I want to do a documentary. Like on my life, cause shit, that's why I like vlogging too. Because it's like I could see this anytime. Whenever I had kids, I could they could see it too. Yeah, so sure. it's just memories. But yeah, I do want to do a documentary. That's what's up, man. Um, any shout outs or anything you want to say on closing? Shit. Uh stay sucker free. Uh follow me on Instagram at LC Honcho. Uh I ain't really got no shout outs. I mean shit. Shout out to you, my nigga. Thanks, man. Keep it going, man. man shit. I'm you know, I'm trying, man. <laughs> I, I brought you gonna... to the domain, man. This is where we at, man. This shit sure. gonna pay off, man. For, For sure. sure. You just gotta stay consistent. For sure, man. Hey. It's your boy Chi Chapman, Medium Mill, LC Honcho, and we closing out like that, man.